All right, yet another NYCFC at home with the Cooligans presented by El Himador. And this one is kind of sweet. You know <laughs> okay, I mean? yeah, this one should be presented by El Ganador. Okay. All right. Oh, <laughs> me, me, me. Let's Even go. Make it. Okay? <laughs> Will it have us on the bottle? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. What a what a big, uh, obviously big uh, derby win. Uh, we did it, uh, buddy. But- it was a thrashing, <laughs> my friend. Uh, so uh, exciting. Uh, I mean, a lot uh, a lot to discuss today because uh, our guest today will be Sean Johnson, goalkeeper for New York City Football Club. All right. He gonna save the show. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We need him, okay? He's our last resort. Uh, uh, So a lot to look forward to uh, today, so let's get started. Let's take an inside look. Which, by the way, presented by Adidas. All right? Shouts to Adidas, yo. Well, 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 look at this, a Hudson River derby, uh, you know, and, and we're in a better mood than the last one. You know what I yeah. mean? Was it was it really a derby? You know what I mean? Because I think for it to be a derby, both teams got to show up. You know what I mean? <laughs> wow. OK, yeah. <laughs> that's how we start in this segment, Alexis. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's getting hot in here with all these hot takes. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, this is uh, look, the we're excited, uh, exciting to see uh, not only just a, a derby win, but uh, a, a a dominant convincing uh there there was no confusion on who was the better team uh and it wasn't uh, like a stroke of luck or a single mistake i would say this is probably the most dominant nycfc's look coming out of a derby no I I would say the same thing. I mean, there there've been uh, there's always there generally been close games, uh, and yeah. this was I, I, after that um, after Gary McKay, uh Steven got the the, the game time goal. Uh, that's, Especially before uh, the half, that's so huge. Yeah, and once that happened, it really felt like you know we're not losing uh, this game. And and it, and it, it, the thing I'm excited about most is just like the you know we, we yeah we do have a new coach and and. Uh, and and the, the matches in uh, against Red Bull, uh, the, the the previous one, just we we couldn't sort of uh, instill the way we wanted to play and 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 show that kind of uh, dominance in, in that game. But this time around, they just felt like as the, as simply because the team has had more time to play together uh, and get to know each other, the chemistry is just building to a point where it like Red Bull always gives us trouble and. Yeah, it, it, I, I'm, they it, always it show me, up for the match. Always show up big. Yeah, even if like uh, Rebel are having a a rough season or or whatever, it's when this when the Hudson River Derby arrives, they're like they they clearly have it circled on their calendar and are always ready for the match. But right. this time around, it really felt like the they they were they really couldn't figure out what to do, and and there, there were too many uh, NYCFC players that were just on on one right they were just yeah. at their best and they, they rebel really really struggled and we're not used to seeing that i mean look we watched tati castellano play hard make a lot of great decisions play for the team over and over again and it really not equates to goals you know and you're like i mean they got to come someday well they came you know? <laughs> <laughs> they all come in one lump here yeah very much um, i mean it was a waterfall yeah, dude. And he, what I love about uh, the way Tati Castellanos plays is that he's so difficult to sort of kind of get in 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 his head, you know, because he's always getting in your head. So you saw all of that start to work. And again, Moxie controlling the match, you know, Alex Ring just, you know, hitting some button on FIFA <laughs> that he didn't know he had. You know what I mean? No, um, man. We're getting, uh, you know, too used to uh, absolute bangers, right? Uh, like Alex Ring, early in the season, was like playing left wing, right? He was just right yeah. up front getting tap-ins, and now he's back to uh, the usual old ring of just uh, banging goals in from 25 yards out. Uh, <laughs> just what he does. <laughs> which is, you know, we, we're spoiled at this point. No, but, but obviously, any 
incredible goal. Uh, and and, uh, I, and I loved the 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 intention, the 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 not taking the foot off the gas. Uh, you know, even Making even subs in the ninety first minute. <laughs> <laughs> We're going for, for all of them. Any, yeah. you know, get as many goals as possible. And and uh, and it was there was a a really great moment too when um when Tati before Tati completed his hat trick, it was a a penalty that maxi uh morales drew uh, yeah. uh on and you know, he tim, normally tim, takes tim parker with the with the with the foul but the uh i know he gave him uh maxi gave tati the ball uh to, to complete his hat trick and it was a, a beautiful moment of two two argentines uh right. uh you know showing uh, love and and really appreciation and tati Castanet, like they would tati normally Cast- do with a short rib you know or a, a mate <laughs> gourd you know <laughs> Just. Yeah. <laughs> so the uh, and and there was a, a lovely yeah just kiss kiss on the forehead uh, from Tati to to Maxi, which uh, I mean, look, we at the, we need we need all the love we can get, and it right. was beautiful to see. It's very South American. Just to, <laughs> just plant a nice kiss on him for him handing were, you a ball. I wouldn't be surprised if they uh, you know uh, as a goal celebration they kiss on both cheeks. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, <laughs> hey, hey che, get easy. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful uh no man just a, but again a big win uh uh you know obviously it, it puts us in a position for uh the even the playoffs i i think there's mathematically still a possibility for us to get into fourth place i'm not a hundred percent sure on that i think if columbus right. loses and we win anything can happen i i know it's it's not really points it's points per game it's but, points per game now which is why colorado is in first place having only played three games <laughs> yeah. if i do the math yeah. correctly okay <laughs> look i ain't go with decimals all right you bro? know what i mean it's not really my thing you know <laughs> unless but you're look, talking money <laughs> yeah exactly if you're saying it, they're first then i guess colorado rapids are first do they win Congrats. the supporter <laughs> shield <laughs> they colorado play rapids, you just won mls cup <laughs> i don't know how this works out <laughs> yeah. oh and you played three and a half games i don't know how that happened but but hey, hey, you know, MLS, <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> I mean, no. I think NYCFC, we've said this before. I'll say it again. In MLS, it, playoffs matter, right? It doesn't necessarily matter where you ended me. It matters getting in and it matters how good you're playing when you get in there. Find me a team playing better than, than NYCFC right now. Uh, the, a huge Derby win, a hat trick in a highly contested match against a bitter rival on the way into the playoffs. I mean, uh, you know, all signs are pointing towards we good right now, which is <laughs> exactly. the official way MLS <laughs> says it. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, that's what that's what they put in the playoffs. Instead of an X, you know, to confirm <laughs> yeah. the playoff, they put they put in little tiny font. We good right now. Okay, we good right now. You know, <laughs> and guess what? You're good right now because coming up, Sean Johnson. All right, baby, finally here with the one, the only, the man between the sticks, all right? <laughs> the, uh, I, I mean, wait till you guys hear his voice. One of my favorite things about him is, imagine an 80s movie villain became a goalkeeper. <laughs> that voice of the, I have your son on the, on the phone. That is this man's voice. It's absolutely amazing. And it must intimidate the defenders if they're out of position as he yells. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Sean. Johnson, Sean, what's, what's up, happening, brother? Guys? What's up? <laughs> there it I is. Actually, I actually was I was tempted to do a really high pitched voice just to put you on the spot. <laughs> decided decided not to last minute though. Decided okay, to. yeah. Let's do do, do, do is... your best. Do your best Elmo impression. That'd be great. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> he was like, "Hey, everybody!" We'd be like, "What? what hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold oh, on." Hold on. Sean back. got some range. Yeah, start it over. Start it over. <laughs> my my first question is when you call customer service and they're like, "Is if you want to speak to this." person say one that don't work for you right it's just vibration <laughs> it, 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 it literally doesn't and it's actually a frustration <laughs> because every every automated line that i call it's the, the whoever it is telling me that they don't understand they retell me the menu over again. And so I'm just, I get frustrated. I hang up the phone. I call back. And I just start using the touchpad. So that yeah. happens every time. Every that don't time. work for you, man. It You're on base. That's it amazing. Vibrations at the end of the day. <laughs> well, Sean, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about this, uh, you know, from, from the goalkeeper's 
perspective, you're obviously the, the first goalkeeper we've had on on this show. Um, what has been what has this year been like for you? Uh, the MLS is back tournament, uh, you know, being in the bubble, uh, finding ways to train. Uh, what was quarantine like? How has uh, this team uh, managed to go from kind of the rocky start to really finding a, a whole bunch of chemistry these last few games? Yeah, I'll tell you what, I mean, this this year has been crazy for everybody. Um, you know, from from the start of the year, you know, we were flying and, you know, CONCACAF Champions League, then all of a sudden, uh, you know, we were told to, to stay home and, you know, told, getting told to stay home turned into, you know, two months of starting to learn how to, to work out at home and, and have Zoom workouts and Zoom hangouts and all that stuff. So, you know, credit to everybody, honestly, for, for making the most of it. And um, it, it wasn't easy, I'll tell you that. Uh, you know, we started off pretty, pretty slow in the bubble in terms of results, um, but it was getting used to the bubble as well. You know, there's there's no excuses, but everybody deals with with isolation differently. And um, we just have to navigate that. And then once we once we kind of came together, I think, you know, we started to uh, to be on the up and up. But it, it definitely wasn't an easy year, but I think we're in OK place now. When you look at sort of your position on the field, right? I mean, there's been so many talks about Ronnie's system, and, and now it seems to all be clicking. You see it from a very different angle. Are, are, do you study it and be like, yo, you're in the wrong place. You got to go here and there. Or are you just sitting back like, y'all need to figure this out because I'm doing my job. You know? <laughs> no, if it, was that, if it was that easy just to, just to set it and leave it, that would, that would be amazing. Um, no, I, I, I actually have a, I have a lot of responsibility um, in games and training sessions. Um, you know, I, I like to think of myself as one of the more vocal guys um, on the squad. And, uh, you know, I, I can see things before they happen, which is uh, a benefit for being a goalkeeper. So uh, I'm constantly talking to guys and constantly moving guys around, even when we have the ball. Um, I think guys guys get tired of, of hearing me. But, uh, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, it, it all helps. So Yeah, there, there's definitely uh, – you, you see a lot, especially, you know, you're one of the, uh, one of the goalkeepers definitely in this league that – and with the way NYCFC plays, uh, you you got to be good with your feet. You got to you're obviously yeah. we're playing out of the back a lot uh, and things like that. The other thing I wanted to to, to point out was I, you're you're leading in saves in the league in in MLS with 77 at, at the moment. There, so that that is a cool thing, right? To to be that good of a goalkeeper and save your team that much, but also you have to be a little bit like, yo, why do I got to save 77 <laughs> shots? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. there, there is that a bit of that balance. How do you kind of like manage that? to be like oh i'm playing at a high level and this is great but i also have to make a lot of these saves yeah yeah so i mean you you get kind of in this like you know this in this in between space where you want to yell at guys for for allowing that many shots on goal but at the same time like you know being uh having the most amount of saves in the leagues you want to thank them for for allowing that many yeah, shots yeah. on goal so <laughs> you don't know which one it is but no, i think uh I think that the chances that we've given up, I mean, it's obviously, you know, my, my job to be back there and make saves. Um, and, you know, this year, maybe more than others at this point, but I think it's just what our team's needed. And, and, you know, like you guys said, like our team went through a really tough time period. We were trying to figure things out. Um, and in those moments, you just have to, to hold strong defensively. But I mean, you know, what's, what's even more crazy is like Anton's also like, I think leading the team in like goals with goals. Four goals. So it's like, <laughs> We have we have a lot of responsibilities. It's a back line now, which is uh, which is good, and we're we're, we're taking we're taking advantage yeah. of it. So. You guys also got to make the lunches. You guys have a lot. You do as a back Listen, so we'll, we'll we'll take it at this point. You, you, you give us the responsibilities. We'll do it, man. We'll yeah. do it. Actually, I also want to point out you have 77 saves, a 77 uh, percent save percentage, uh, and you have seven clean sheets. You got to get to AC and pull a, a, one of these things. <laughs> it's all sevens, bro. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Hey, straight straight sevens. Let's make it the first, the first of seven championships, too. That's, that's what we're trying to do. So. Okay. Let's go. That's what we're trying to do. Uh, I, I want, on a more serious note, the, the you know we've spoken to uh, other people uh, about the, the the Black Players for Change uh, Coalition and, and NYCFC's involvement in the Black Lives Matter movement. And I know that you've been uh, very much a leader uh, in, in in that regard um and you know maybe we can talk about it just a little bit more of just like what you've been seeing from uh you, you know not only your your leadership in the organization and, and kind of moving that forward but what's it been like for you to be kind of this arbiter of like sharing information and sharing your experiences and also being a professional player within an organization and and kind of taking that role on how's that been for you 
Yeah, it's it's been an incredible experience. Um, it's been it's been one you know with with the BPC coming together, a uh, group of guys with just the same um, same sentiment, same same end goal, um, same vision of of having our voices be heard and addressing systemic you know racism within the league and outside the league. Um, so from that, just thought you know we came together and said you know what let's let's make it happen. Um, let's let's be a part of this change and. Um, so it's been, it's been great. It's been great having the conversations, uh, connecting, um, you know, with, with New York city FC and, and, and the club, uh, the, the league, um, obviously players, um, in the locker room, um, and just kind of, you know, increasing everybody's awareness, um, and getting everybody involved and, and being a part of discussions, planning, uh, change, all that's been, um, a tremendous experience and nothing I would, I would trade. That's awesome. Yeah. When you look at sort of some of the changes that have started to come about, uh, what are you sort of looking forward to uh, anything in particular that that may come down the that may be coming out pretty soon or something that you guys can point to and say, here's some changes. And also, uh, when do you think uh, some more of the uh, f- of the women's players are going to get involved? Because I know that that was a big uh a point of a uh, topic for you guys when you started yeah. as well. Yeah, no, I, I think we've, we've had, we've had discussions with uh, the, the women informed organization as well. Um, mm-hmm. We've had discussions and um, you know, we're, we're happy to, to continue those, those discussions and moving forward. I think um, there's a lot of great things to be done. Um, a lot of important things to be done. And um, you know, we're, we're both young organizations and we want to make sure that we're all um, all hands on deck, um, you know, and, and coming together when we can. Cause I think amplifying our voices together is, is important. Um, and then, um, you know, also, uh, the discussions and being a part of those from, uh, you know, from a, from a club standpoint, um, being in, being in, starting to be, be in rooms and be a part of discussions where, you know, there, there's a, a D and I plan, um, for, for the future, for the short term and long term, looking forward into 2021 and making it sustainable for, for players that come beyond me. So being, uh, being a part of that process, um, myself, uh, you know, Brad Stuver, um, Sebastian Vieira, um, you know, we've all been, uh, in discussions with, with everybody from, from the top down from, you know, with, with Marty, um, Brad Sims, uh, Dave Lee, all these guys. So everybody's coming together, um, and, and forming a plan to really put into action at a local level, um, as well as the league level as far, and, and as well as community as well. So, um, we're hitting we're hitting every area, and uh, everybody's been um, you know tremendous in in, in the the time and, and energy that they they've put forward to it. Yeah, That's and you awesome. guys, uh, I saw you, you guys uh, opened a, a mini a mini pitch uh, in Newark, New Jersey. Uh, the New, York, New York New York Red Bulls were involved. Uh, Alexis is from uh, from Born New York, New Jersey. Born so, but there must be it, Happy to it's see a, it. a, an interesting thing, right? We just wrong had the team, by the way, wrong team on it, obviously. <laughs> but it's beautiful yeah, to see. Shouts to I, Newark. It's yeah, great. Yeah, 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 no teacher, no teacher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's great to see that. Uh, the, you know that that unity, even. Uh, across kind of uh, rivalry obviously this is a much more a- important issue but there must be a little bit of like yeah look we're gonna build a pitch I'll, I'll help you guys out but you know Hudson River Derby time look we, we ain't we ain't friends anymore right I, yeah. <laughs> hey, when we, when you step across those lines when you step across those lines it's, it's a different ball game now but honestly the pitch the pitch in Newark I mean the uh, the whole the whole goal behind the pitch and creating access for the community um, and really taking a first step um, and, uh, you know, and doing that with, in unity with, you know, those Red Bull players, um, and, and the kids of the community, I think is, is, uh, you know, something that speaks for itself. And, you know, when, when you have the opportunity to, to get together and, and, you know, do, do something that's impactful for community, I think, you know, we, we quickly put, you know, our differences, our competitive nature to the side and we're all, we're all doing it for, for common good. So, um, that was, that was a really special day. Um, but yeah, but once we stepped on the field for, for the, for the Derby, it was, uh, it was a different, different, uh, different feeling, different ball game. So. Yeah. And I want to thank you because I grew up in Newark and we didn't have opportunities like that. We had a basketball court where one of the rims was broken and that allowed <laughs> us to play soccer sometimes. But, you know, when we talked about it, no one knew the official name. We were like, that's the one Charlie got stabbed at. We'll all meet <laughs> at the court. Charlie got stabbed. at. So you've changed the city I grew up in for the better. Speaking of the Rebels, you guys just finished a derby where, I mean, what a thrashing, right? I mean, it was just what an opportunity you've been. You've been with NYCFC for a hot minute. You've seen some of these derby Arby's go both ways. It's always been a tough match. There was something different about this from your point of view. And don't give us the media speak. I right? <laughs> with your homies. We won't even put this in if you want. What what do you think changed? What do you think caused 
such a shift of momentum? Yeah, I think we, you know, in the, in the past we've we've uh, we've had derbies that were were good. We've had battles, uh, but we haven't won, you know, convincingly uh, in time. Um, and I say convincingly, like, you know, we we kept our foot on the gas pedal. We wanted more from the the first whistle to the last whistle. And I think uh, for the first time this season, you know, we we went down a goal, ended up ended up coming back, um, and then scoring four and answered. So, you know, for for us, it was we needed to make a statement. Um, we need to make a statement that we were we were there for business. Um, you know, we weren't going to let up. And you know, if the game went on for another thirty minutes, we would have continued on. So, um, yeah, that was that was a, a strong statement internally. We just wanted to make, and um, you know, they they had a, a couple good performances in the past, and we wanted to make sure that that we stepped out there and left nothing to uh, n- nothing to question. Yeah, and uh, and we you know we've talked about this a whole bunch on the show, cause, and I I've as as you know as a fan, I, there's just, there's a a definitive sense of like comfort I felt this year as far as defensively, like we we've just like looked good defensively. I mean, the, the, you know, sometimes struggling to find the goals, but uh, can you talk a little bit about you, the the back line this season where where there I think there's. You know, we when the usual the, the usual starters uh, of um, uh, you know Chano, Collins, uh, Matarita, and, and Tinnerholm, uh, and and you back there. The there's there's a there's a chemistry that whether the the the, the fullbacks are going up forward and and doing it on on, on both ends, but also Chano and Collins are getting these huge huge stops all the time. Usually big big moments. I mean, I know you have a lot of saves, right? But they also do uh, as well. They really come uh, through. You know. Where where I feel there's a sense of uh, under uh, underappreciating uh, from from the rest of the league of how good NYCFC is defensively. Uh, so can you talk a little bit about that about how you guys have managed to gel together so well? Yeah, I think you know something that's important to to realize too is the the continuity of playing together um, last year, playing together this year. Um, it's rare that you get to play with. Um, a group, a back line for for an extended period, extended period of time. So you have to take advantage of it when you when you have the opportunity. Um, but those guys are special, man. I, I think you know you've seen it in in recent games. They're they're cutting out goal scoring opportunities as much as I'm making saves, um, and I count those as, as saves. Um, you know, uh, Anton on the other end of it, scoring goals, contributing not only on the defensive end. Maxime's a, a warrior, um, super important to this team. Um, Kyan, same um, game in, game out. You know, calls himself the Iron Man. I'm sure, you, I'm sure you guys have seen the hashtag. And, and Mata's a special attacking talent as well. Um, and defensively, he's been he's been rock solid. So um, we have we have guys in the back line, um, and and not to mention too, like the guys that have stepped in and done a job as well, Seb. Um, you know, uh, Goody. So every everybody steps in and knows knows that they have to to do a job and perform. But I think everybody makes it uh makes it competitive, makes it challenging. And all, at the end of the day, we we're, we're welcoming and we know that everybody can get the job done. Now, NYCFC is going to play at Soldier Field for the first time. Old home for you. You know, you've been around Chicago. Uh, what are your thoughts on the game? What are your thoughts on heading into the playoffs? And how far do you think this could go? Yeah, uh, going back to Chicago, um, it's always special. It's you know where, where I started my career. Um, second time I'm playing in Soldier Field, first time in, in Major League Soccer. Um, but uh, yeah, it's gonna be cool to kind of take in the, the new um, new atmosphere. Um, they've obviously rebranded and uh, moved to the city, which will be kind of cool to see. Um, kind of you know playing in that stadium is always always special. And then yeah, it's it's the last game of the season. We want to we want to continue our, our form and momentum going into the playoffs. Uh, last real opportunity to play a competitive game before we we get back at it um, when we figure out who we're going to play, and then also you know there's everything's up for grabs. Uh, decision day has been super exciting in years past. Uh, this year, um, you know Columbus just uh, lost a result to Orlando, which now if, you know if they lose, we win. We have an opportunity to to go and, and play a home game. So you never know what can happen. Um, you never know. So uh, everything to play for um, playoffs. I think you can expect that, you know, our experience and what we've learned in the past couple of years, uh, no matter who we play, we'll, we'll put that into uh, put that into play and be ready no matter who it is. OK, nice. yeah, uh, I'm, I'm absolutely stoked. There's a lot to look forward to that. Yeah, uh, you know, we mentioned a whole, a whole bunch of times like this team has gone through a lot uh, yep. this season uh, and managed to still be not only entertaining, but uh, also get the results. And you're a huge uh, part of that as well. So, uh, Sean, thank you so much uh, for joining us on NYCFC at home. man. we really appreciate it. Appreciate you guys. 
Maybe let's do a little match preview presented by EA Sports. He's a yo, who's next? All right. Thank you again to Sean Johnson for joining us. Uh, an absolute honor. Uh, we should also let's also take a look uh, forward uh, at the next match coming up uh, against you know uh sean johnson's former team the chicago fire this, this is going to be you yes went at, from a derby to now playing an x you know <laughs> <laughs> okay you know it's a, those are always uncomfortable situations uh but no this is the decision day uh the the final game of this very very strange mls season uh and and still uh but you know still a lot to play for and uh and obviously we want the team to go in well uh into the playoffs obviously the match is going to be sunday november 8th at 3 30 p.m PM uh, on Yes Network and on NYCFC Radio, uh, so make sure to check that out. But look, the last match we played against them, uh, we won three to one. Uh, you know, uh, Chicago is a, a little a, different Chicago Fire team, though. They they seem to be banging on all cylinders right now. So they're playing they're playing well. Look, the, the their last uh, match against uh, Minnesota ended up uh, two two. They uh, they're in the playoffs, but they're, they're in the last spot. And, uh, you know, they, they want the same thing. They want to be going into uh, going into the playoffs uh, on a good note. But we usually have their number for, for the most part, even though like and I mentioned this last time that my, you know, uh, you, my concern is always uh, their designated player, Robert Barrich, uh, uh, who's uh, I believe close to I think he has 10 goals this season, something like that. Uh, it's, it's pretty good. And we're not used to seeing Chicago Fire players be on the, you know, uh, you know, leading goal scorers uh, list uh, for the most part. <laughs> so they, they, they Although definitely nickel, not since Nikolic when he was uh, in the running for the golden boot. Correct. Correct. Uh, so it's been, yeah. That, and that's what, what, two years ago, right? Three yeah. years ago. It's been a Maybe while. Three. Yeah. It's been a while. Yeah. Um, so, I, I think this game, uh, we should win this game. Uh, you know, I, I, even like even if we lose this game, it's not devastating for uh, a, any playoff hopes or or standings. We don't nah, have to play. play but if you want to climb, if you want to climb the ranks a little bit, you want to put yourself in a little bit better position. Then yeah, you want to win this match. And also, who wants to go into the playoffs having lost a match? Exactly right. The uh, the, the the yeah, that, like I mentioned before, the 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 slight possibility of getting into fourth place might be there, uh, depending on uh, you know a, a couple decimal points here and there. Columbus yeah. losing, uh, but. But the, the you know they, they're still there's so much I'm excited about uh, the playoffs this year it's just like e even though uh, with all the adversity that NYCFC has dealt with uh, you know some bad injuries players missing games for uh, a, a long stretches we still look good. We looking yeah. good. You know, it's like yeah. <laughs> you know there's been a couple games where we probably should have played a little better, should have won here and there. But for the most part, when when we've had to win a game or we had to play well, that's pretty much happened so well i mean if you look at some of the players that didn't perform up to task previously you guys like jesus medina you guys like uh you know gary mckay steven everyone right now is playing at an extremely high level and it's another you know we've had these injuries some of these players are starting to come back moxie's now back into the fold but if you look at it if when one player is injured someone else takes their place you know it's like the system continues to move forward and when you've got a guy, a guy playing as good as Antoine Tinnerholm is playing when you've got a guy like Tati An Castellanos Antoine, Antoine Tinnerholm again I keep calling I him Antoine <laughs> uh, you know Antoine he's been, he's been in the in the Bronx too long yeah, you know yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know what Tony Tinnerholm <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you know? Tony Turner home, I can get by. This is I like Tony Turner home. <laughs> hey, Tony Turner home is here. Hey, he's got a, this he's got is a my, chain. my half Swedish uh, Italian cousin, Tony yeah. Turner home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he grew up in Turkey somehow. Uh, yeah, Tony Turner home from Turkey. Uh, <laughs> you don't want to cross him. Okay? Uh, he knows a lot of people. Uh, Anton Tinnerholm is playing extremely well. Again, when you have to set up your team to defend the right back who starts the offense, <laughs> and now you've got someone like Maxi Morales who can sort of ping players as everyone's out of position, which it seems to be a big part of Ronnie Dyla's system is to confuse the defenders. I, I think what, what you're looking at is you have players that are playing well. They understand the system. You can plug and play as you move forward. Extremely dangerous team to play against. Yeah. With, with this last match, Go to Chicago, get you them three points, come home, go into the playoffs, riding high, cloud nine. Come on.
Yeah, uh, so it, it will be very Come on, exciting. Antoine. Let's go, Tony. <laughs> uh, so, yes. Uh, so thank you again, everybody, uh, uh, for tuning in. Uh, yeah, look, make sure to watch the game uh, Sunday, November 8th, 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. You can watch on Net- Yes Network and on nycfc.com slash radio if you want to hear the English and Spanish broadcast. Uh, so, uh, all right, I hope we get them three points. I hope we go, hope we go into the playoffs uh you know on a very positive note uh but yeah the playoffs are coming soon and there's a, a lot to look forward to from all nycfc so thank Let's you again go. for tuning in to another episode of nycfc at home with the cooligans presented by el Imador. <laughs>